How can you take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself? She feels dear. Cut me here, okay? Told you I got you. moment she removes the pain. We all feel all over the time. To time. We lost two of us. I'm there for you. That all things evil once. I can't do this without you. Max, when you need me, I am here for you. With healing hands upon your heart. Look at that. Is he smiling? This is a great story, but it's also a true story. And I thought it might be interesting to uh, give to David. I admired David, and I wanted to work with him. I like everything I make to feel relatively handmade. It's never so pristine that you feel like a machine could have made this film. You feel like there are people behind it. I remember Forrest Tucker. He spent his whole life locked up, except for the times that he broke out. He broke out of San Quentin in a boat. David Lowry's got a real eye and a real ear and a real voice as a writer. He's ready for all your input. He's definitely what you'd call an auteur in that way. He's not just directing, he's writing, he's visualizing, and the movies that he makes feel like his personality in some way. I felt the look of the movie was in many ways baked into the script. It lent itself to a certain aesthetic. As long as the movie looks the way it reads, we'll be in good shape. The next morning, I take one more quiet moment on DeCourcy to reflect on the end of Brother 12's story. Having fled Canada, he allegedly dies in Switzerland only a year later. I say allegedly because the doctor who signs the death certificate is one of his followers, and an eyewitness places the cult leader in San Francisco years after his death. With all of his supposedly supernatural powers, perhaps Brother 12's final trick is escaping scot-free. Wild wolves howling at the moon There's wilted rose that will never bloom It's a devil's mile on demon's day We're bound away We're bound away My dad was killed by a drunk driver when I was five years old. Poverty was always present in our lives. And as long as I can remember, I felt bad for women who were on the streets. I just felt sick for them. Oh, dear Lord, feel like I'm dying. I spent time feeding women on the streets, and then they would go to a shelter just for the night, and you knew it was going to be dangerous. Women were getting released from jail and going to halfway houses where they were charged $125 a week. A group of women with a history of prostitution and trafficking. What do you expect them to do to get that $125 a week? I would sit and talk with women and interview them, and most of the women first hit the streets between about the ages of 14 and 16 years old. Born into a dysfunctional family. By the time I was 14, I ran away and I started selling my body. I was jumping in and out of cars to support my drug habit. And that went on for quite a few years. Just didn't know a way out. Didn't know how to get back to my children. Come on, take a break, kids.